Good evening and welcome to our Sunday evening live webinar and our theme is Gardening for the Soul. What I've done after I put my specs on, I've lit a candle for universal peace and for global unity. So let us just focus on the flame and let us unite all our hearts in the cathedral of love, the landscape. Just be still and in that stillness relax and just be aware that you are loved. and that all your needs are met. I'm going to begin by reading to you from the late John O'Donoghue from his beautiful spiritual book To Bless the Space Between Us. And our reading this evening focuses on a special blessing in praise of fire and John says this let us praise the grace and risk of fire in the beginning the world was red and the sound was thunder and the wound in the unseen spilled forth the red weather of being. In the name of the fire, the flame and the light, praise the pure presence of fire that burns from within without thought of time. The hunger of fire has no need for the reliquy of the future. It adores the eras of now, where the memory of the earth in flames that lick and drink the air is made to release. Its long enduring forms in a powder of ashes left for the wind to decipher as air intensifies, intensifies the hunger of fire, made the thought of death breathe new urgency into our love of life. As fire cleanses trance, made the flame of passion burn away what is false. As short as the time from spark to flame so brief may the distance be between heart and being. May we discover beneath our fear embers of anger to kindle justice. May courage cause our lives to flame in the name of the fire and the flame and the light. Let's reflect on those beautiful words. May courage cause our lives to flame in the name of the fire and the flame and the light. So we give thanks for the blessings of sacred fire. Let us just embrace the element of fire. You may have memories of a campfire as a young child, whether you were in the scouts or the girl guides, and you all sat around the fire singing and sharing gifts. I know for me, when I was in the Boy Scouts in Ireland, and we went on a camping weekend 
we'd always have a big raging fire. And many of us collected wood for hours. But when evening came, the fire was lit. And we sat there with our billy bongs singing away. Great memories. Blessed memories. But within the Christian family, fire has other connotations. For the symbol of fire represents the Holy Spirit. So we call on the Holy Spirit. And there is a beautiful prayer which we say in evening vespers. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me, your child, with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Touch my life that I may see you in everything that lives, moves, and has its being from you this day. Empower me to live in the present moment. Seeking only your love and your light. Relax now. Relax in the knowledge that you are love. Be still. And I'm going to read from Sister Stan, Gardening for the Soul. And their daily <clears throat> reflections. And I want to just backtrack a little bit to April the 1st, which we forgot to read. Vision is the gift the artist brings to society. First, the artist has to learn to see, to sharpen the sense of sight so that he or she can see into the very essence of things. Then from this heightened visual scene and sense, the artist has to develop the power to create new things. Things that have not been there before. There is an artist in all of us waiting to come to life. Only I can see what I see as I see it. And the more effort I put into seeing, the more honestly and truly I see, the more possibilities I see, and the more creative I can become. And that sounds like a quote from Wayne Dwyer. And here we have another beautiful quote from Maurice Grosser who says, the painter draws with his eyes, not with his hand. Whatever he sees, if he sees it clear, he can put it down. I'm going to read that again. The painter draws with his eyes, not with his hand. Wherever he sees it, he sees it clear. And he can put it down. And Sister Stan goes on to share this. Our lives can be predictable, dull and uninteresting. Yes, for most of the time. That's just the way it is. But if we focus on how boring and repetitive our daily life is, we will feel dull and lifeless and our garden will become choked with weeds and nothing will reach fruition. If we focus instead on living wholeheartedly, if we let our roots grow deep into everything we do, 
then we can transcend the monotony of the constant around us of our daily lives and transform it into sexual energy. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Yes, thanks be to God for the gift of this precious day. And we thank God for Brother Brian who made the most beautiful homemade bread today for our little celebration, for our monthly peace service where we provide homemade soup or broth and fresh bread from our ovens to feed those travelling long distance. And their little eyes go boom. What soup is it today, Brother Sean? And I always say, we're having eclectic soup today, as I did. Well, what's eclectic soup? And I said, well, it's got potage, it's got mushrooms, it's got pasta, and it's got various herbs from Provence. And they go, oh. But they always come back for seconds. So initially, they wanted to know what the soup was, but they weren't willing to receive the truth. And that's how it is today, isn't it? But let's see what Sister Stan else has to say. She says, If you treat a man as he appears to be, you make him worse than he is. But if you treat a man as if he already were what he potentially could be, you make him what he should be. John Wolfgang von Goethe. And for the 3rd of April, she said, Nature has gentle moments, soft winds, sprinkling rain, warm sunshine, floating petals. But nature also has incredible power to harm and to hurt another. Earthquakes, thunderstorms, floods, the constant cycle of pred predation and death, pain and disease. When we learn to recognize that this power and this gentleness are all part of the same nature, we can begin to face the paradox of our own potential for gentleness and destructive power too. And she quotes us a beautiful reflection from the Teo Chi Chi Chung, chapter 13. When you feel yourself part of nature, you will live in harmony. You will live in harmony. And just digressing a bit there, very often we have visitors that want to come into the garden. And it depends at what time of the day and it depends where the sun is shining. Because we've got many things glistening from the trees, many beautiful objects, different types of wind chimes. And some are quite curious and they need to come in. But not everybody is let in. Because we ask Mother Earth, we ask the elementals, we even ask St. Francis and Jesus, do we let this person into your sacred oasis? And we usually get a quiet yes or no. Or we're given the courage to empower them by saying yes, come in. But there have been several that we've had to say no to because they came in with a mindset that was destructive. They came in with a loose tongue where there was a lot of foul language and expletives. And all of that is not positive. The person wasn't bad. It was the tools they used to convey whatever truth. But we told them we would love to welcome you back. We suggest you go on the 12 step program and try and look at why you use such expletives. 
Some took it very humbly and thanked us, and others just came out with a whole load of nonsense, and we decided just to smile. So come with us now. Come with us into our monastery garden, and just sit with us for a little while. Feel the gentleness on your feet, for before you walk on the grass, you see a little rug where you can place your shoes or sandals or slippers. And having done that, you're going to walk a short distance, maybe 30 steps, and you're going to find a chair to relax on, to be still upon. And now that you're comfortable, I would like you to just glance around the garden. Let's look at your garden. And if you don't have a garden or you live in a high-rise apartment, you may want to visualize a place of beauty that you love. So let us visualize you taking that first step without your shoes, your sandals or your stillies. And you feel a gentle warmth between your toes tingling. Yes, you do. And in that stillness, you sense with your feet on this sacred ground a gentle impulse. Yes, you do. It's a beautiful selfless energy that's flowing right up through this planet Earth. And it's an awesome feeling. It's as if you're walking on a cushion of air. And you're becoming lightheaded now. So you decide to sit by the waterfall. And the trickling of the water from the lower end of the pond to the fast acting at the top end of the point, you notice how blessed you are, that you've got through this life with your soulmate, and though tempted sometimes to walk away from strife or confrontation, Mother Earth is empowering your heart to share this and these other issues with God and let them go. And in the distance you can hear the most melodic tune of Tibetan bells playing a very simple chant which translates Here I am. Come, use me. And now that you're comfortable, you are aware of the animal kingdom. You are aware of the beauty, the fragrance, the color, the scents. You're aware, more importantly, that you were invited here and that the angelic realm are truly blessing you now. Be still and know that God is with you. Know that the Christ has come to you and he's here. And he's brought with him the Archangel Michael, a powerful Archangel. And you notice something glistening in his pouch and it is the magic scissors. He now asks you to bring to mind anything or everything 
that has troubled you of late. Just be, just allow in your very in-breath the presence of Christ, the Son of God, to bless you, to protect you, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to give new life to a dormant seed. So let us be still and give glory to God. Can you sense the rhythm flowing through your toes? The nape of your neck is even being blessed by God as you sit in this cathedral of love and where you now relinquish control. Be still. No, it's okay. Just relax now and just sense the presence of Christ as he breathes the breath of God all over you and allows you to come back to your heart, your teacher. The gateway is the gateway to your soul, and your soul is the gateway to God. Be still now. Be still. And the Christ places a blessing on your crown chakra at the top of your head. Praise you, Lord. And now, leave a blessing with Mother Earth. Thank her for this opportunity of just being still in the presence of God and allow yourself receive her benediction. And now you may wish to arise and release the cloak of protection back to me. And now use one of the beautiful gifts that our community received in a beautiful soft woven blanket which was given to you earlier to ensure that you were kept warm is releasing a beautiful soft selfless love right up through your pelvic girdle the belt around your midriff Be at peace now. Be at peace. And until we meet again, we share with you the Celtic blessing. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky on those we love this night and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gifts of sea and sky, the gifts of Brother Sun and Sister Moon in the animal kingdom. Be in your heart, now and forevermore. Amen. As I blow out this light, I ask Mother Earth with Archangel Michael to prepare you for this journey and that we share our abundance with those we meet in the coming day. Until tomorrow evening, take care, God bless you, and know that you are in the presence of God and that nothing will harm you. Bless you.